Well, hello everybody, we are back, and I need to be extra super duper careful when it comes to this. Uh, <laughs> during the uh, filming of the last clip for the last episode, I may have broken a few things by utilizing this. Not smart. In any case, you might notice that, you know, I've filled in a bit more of the area, and we have, boom, a second reactor. Now, of course, this reactor's not running at the moment, because if I turn it on, all of the coolant drains out and ends up in here. Now, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but at least for the moment, uh, this is the only one that's actually hooked up to anything, and I need to get these two into equilibrium. Uh, I think if this fills up by about half, maybe even a quarter, they should reach an equilibrium where I can have them both running, but yeah. I've also added a bunch more uh, pumps. Uh, as you can see, about 503,000 millibuckets or whatever that is, is being processed, but only 19,000 per tick. So there's that. Uh, it means that I need an a uh, buffer overflow of about 19,000, so that's fine. As you can see up here, uh, where we used to have this wall come out from here, I've now expanded it. Instead of, you know, digging all of that out and making it like so, uh, we'll go with this way. I'm also going to do something about these solar generators, as they're just not necessary anymore. Don't know what I'd use them for. Maybe I can deconstruct them. I do believe there's a disassembler. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe a deconstructor? No? Ah, uh, whatever. In any case, uh, I figured what we'd do for this uh, first clip is get plutonium up and running. How's this looking, actually? Uh, not bad. Uh, not bad. As you can see, it's filling up, so, yeah. But this is tied in directly to the quantum entangleloper down there. Now, what we need to set up is this isotropic centrifuge. Now, uh, I'm going to leave a gap of one or two. I'm going to leave a gap of one. So, the isotropic centrifuge is going to go right here. We're going to have the... Oh! the fuck that come from? Oh, hello. Yep, kill that. Uh, right, so, <laughs> instead of getting distracted, let's get back to it. Now, the ice should... Oh, well, hey, would you look at that? Uh, it needs water. It needs, of course, the plutonium. Uh, we're going to have that... I think that's a gas. So we'll have that input at the back. Uh, items also need to be input, but as does water. So items will probably come in from the top. Auto eject on. Now out the front for items, we're going to have that output. Uh, and that's going to go into one of these, but we'll have it sitting about here ish. And again, it'll be. The same as that, and we've got to have water coming in, and we'll have that come in from the side, doesn't matter. Uh, yes, we can eject waste down the bottom. Uh, items in the top. Yeah. Oop, uh, right, I need to turn this down. Oh, another thing I found is I could turn up the sprint speed. I think it's K. It is not K. Uh, was it J? Yeah, it was J. Check that out. I can turn up the sprint speed. Didn't know I could do that. Bloody brilliant that I can. Uh, right, so we also want to dig there out. And, uh, let's have that set to 16, just so I don't go destroying everything. Now, we need to tap into this. So, we need ultimate pressurized tubing. Uh... Hmm, I guess, yeah, we'll have it go over this way. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8. So we go by 8. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here. Okay. And then we can just dig our way down here until we come to. Here. I guess I miscalculated. In any case, uh, yeah. These machines are pretty great and should get me going. So if we go down here like so. Uh, we can just run this along here. Do -do. Like so. Oop, there we go. So now any waste from here will be expelled. Uh, so we go to gases. Output. At the bottom. And where are we going to input from? We're inputting from the back, aren't we? Yeah, there we go. So, we're now going to input uh, plutonium from the back. Uh, it's going to take the output of this one specifically. So that's what this is for. Basically, this, uh, I can't combine them because they won't share, but this will go up and over and down. It's kind of like a bus lane, I guess, and it'll come here. Uh, Yeah, that's just one through there. So I guess it's just got to come down the back here and then go under here, uh, which means I will need to set this to none. Ba -ba -ba. I can change the color of these either. Yeah, push for none. There we go. So then we can place down some more ultimate pro oh wow I am running low on ultimate pressurized tube evidently. Like so. Uh -huh. Alright. So that is the initial basics done, as you can see. So this one's going to input uh, gases from the bottom, output from the front. This is input from the back, of course. We also need to get items transported over. And that should be relatively easy. I mean, I've also got to dig this out, as this will be the basic structure of the hallway continued down. But yeah, as you can see, I've got a lot of cabling to set up and the like, and this clip's been going on for a while, so I'm going to get stuck in, and when I've made a bit of progress, I will be back. Okay, I am back, and we are here at my base once more. Uh, we are currently working on the automation of, well, concrete. Uh, for the automation of concrete, we need a chemical injection chamber. Evidently, if you, you know, pump chemicals into a chemical injection chamber, like uh, I believe it's water vapor, you can actually just, you know, convert it over. So for this, we need to have a chemical P2P tunnel on the bottom, a pattern provider on the side, and an importer on this side. Now, of course, we want to automatically inject gases input from the bottom. Okay. Now, I did try and uh, set it up so that I could, like, dump my helmet into the AE system, and then it just automatically puts it in here. That did not work. Uh, not with fuzzy cards, not with anything. Uh, it, it was disappointing, to say the least. But, I mean, for now at least, I am making a bit of progress when it comes to my machinery. So, first things first, this needs to be provided with power. Yeah, there we go. And then it needs to be connected. Oop. Oop. So we don't need that one, do we? No. Uh, ooh, not good. There we go. And then over here, connect that up. Goody goody. Uh, and we need to connect it there as well. Now, hopefully, we haven't just uh, overloaded any of the connections, because that would suck a lot. Uh, but I think that's all. Uh, what I can do now is 
put a couple of these in. So, so, so. And over here, one and two. And we put the white concrete down there. So, as you can see, that's looking rather nice. Uh, ooh, I'm also an idiot, but not so much. What I need to do is, I believe it's water vapor, but let's double check. So for this one, we want the recipe. And in a chemical injection chamber, it is water vapor. So we need to go to where I'm producing water vapor. Let's go back this way. Yeah, down here. As you can see, this system is working well. I was thinking before, actually, it'd be really nice if I could take heat from the boiler. Like, instead of using it to convert it to steam, rather pipe it through these thermodynamic conductors and have it go that way. That way I could pump it back through the system to power my thermal evaporation chambers, which I may need to increase the size of soon. Uh, in any case, now I can run back down this way and... Uh, here, like so, oh wait, no, it's underneath, isn't it, damn it, ah, there we go, in any case, we just need to right click on that, boom, and there we go, we have water vapor, so if we chuck that in, we need some speed and energy upgrades, and while we're at it, we can create the pattern, or white concrete so if we go over here clear that out now one white concrete is made by putting one concrete powder in a chemical injection chamber so if we go here chemical injection chamber boom like so now i also need to make a recipe for white concrete powder uh so let's do that. Can't do that. There we go. Let's do that as well. Boop and boop. There we go. And that just goes into one of these. Oh wow. As you can see, I am very, very full up on all of these crafting patterns, but it is going quite well. But that is the system built so now we want to make uh 256 white concrete so if we go 256 click next off it goes now we also want to make speed upgrades by eight Oop. and off it goes Oop. and energy upgrades by eight there we go. As you can see, it is slowly crafting at the moment. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. I do need to make more infuse types, as I've gotten to the point now where the only way to speed it up is to have more of them, which kind of sucks, if you ask me, but I mean, I guess I'll get over it. Energy and speed upgrades. Boom. Look at it go. Uh, hmm. As you can see, the water vapor appears to be the bottleneck there, so I will need to look into that. But in any case, that is this uh, new machine finished. I can now craft automatically all the white concrete I'll ever need, and as you can see, I'm using a fair bit of white concrete, so yeah. Now this one. Four of eight needs uh, four speed and four energy upgrades. Now, while I get all of this done, I'm going to, yeah, well, I'm going to get all of this done and I will be back very shortly with some more updates. Alrighty, so I am back and we are here at my lovely reactor facility. You might notice that uh, I'm being bombarded with some of the worst radiation you could imagine. That is because I majorly fucked up while I was uh, implementing the system and may have destroyed a radioactive barrel. Fun. But as you can see here, we have my lovely turbine. Uh, <laughs> I nearly lost both of my new fancy reactors because uh, that wasn't what I wanted. Uh, the power in this completely filled up. 
and in looking for power sinks, you know, something to just dump all the power into, I ended up coming across someone who suggested using heat, like the resistive heaters, which is good because I was about five, ten minutes away from building a, you know, ultimate level induction system, but this one just dumps 1.11 uh, megajoules of heat into the atmosphere, uh, so yeah, it actually works quite well. And now, as you can see down here, we are starting to develop plutonium. That is because each of these is feeding, uh, each reactor is feeding either this or that. So we now have polonium and plutonium being developed, which is good. Uh, right, uh, that leads over to the quantum entangloper. Uh, entangle porter, I should say. Uh, so I'm going to have to set it up so that this constantly receives more. But at least for now, this system is fully operational. Now, this uh, is where I had my massive breakthrough. As you can see, I can convert the steam back into water, and it's doing so of a rate of 576,000 millibuckets per tick. Now, because it is that much, as you can see, I'm no longer connected to the pumps upstairs. Oh. Oh. I should probably reconnect that, even if it's just for a minute. I'm guessing that's because I changed around the thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, there we go. Uh, that's because I dumped a bunch of the steam, I take it? All right, all right. But as you can see, uh, where is it? Do, do, do. Um, oh, well, it's cu currently processing uh, 119,000 millibuckets per tick. Now, that can go up to the 578,000 millibuckets per tick without there being too much of a hassle. The only thing that's going to bottleneck the system at the moment is this, because at the moment it is essentially processing more than enough coolant. So if we go over here, you'll see that the coolant level is rising in the tank. Uh, that is because it's still connected back to my system. Uh, of course, fissile fuel is not currently being created and sent over. As you can see, this one's almost filled up on sodium. So the two systems are running perfectly fine. In fact, I could even stand to turn them up. Uh, the rate limit's currently at three. I think I could jack them both up to five without there being too much of a hassle, but yeah, I, I really like it. You know, I, I'm recycling the water from steam back into water to feed this, and at the same time I'm recycling the sodium. So essentially this system just requires more fuel to be input and a sufficient place to put the waste. Now, uh, see, I don't know how to check how much radioactive waste is in that barrel, but eventually I guess this will start backing up and then I'll have problems. Ooh. Ah, right, that can't process at the moment. Oh, wow, that is also very full. Ah, uh, right. Didn't think of that. Uh, now that the radioactive waste is considerably higher, I mean, it processes it through pretty quick at least. But yeah, oh, wow, that's uh, interesting. As you can see, you know, it's constantly increasing at, what's that, about 3, 4 per second. Uh, this one should be about the same. Yeah, about 3, 4 per second. So, yeah, th this system is actually going really, really well. And the uh, pumps now are basically only required to provide fuel. Ooh, hello. Right, because the uh, entire area is irradiated, all the life is dying. As you can see over here, we have an absolute metric fuck ton of drops from pretty much everything that's been dying. I mean, it'd be a great farm if it wasn't, you know, so detrimental to my own health. No, oh, seems a creeper died too. But yeah, like, I, I can, I, I guess I can get rid of some of these pumps, which is kind of a pain. They were expensive to make, and they've all got energy and speed upgrades in them, but I don't need them now. Oh, I don't need this either, do I? Yeah. I mean, so long as this remains empty, like, uh, 
as the pumps are being used, more energy is supplied to them first, same with the machines, and then whatever's left over gets dumped as heat into the atmosphere. Now, I know, I know, not good for the environment, sue me. <laughs> I've got to do something, because, yeah, this built up, uh, filled up with power, and I didn't realise it had done that, and, yeah, I, uh, came over to here, and that was emptying, and I came over to here, and these were emptying, and the entire system, like, both of these had maxed out in temperature, and were about 50% damaged. If I hadn't have noticed that, and about a minute later, both of them would have melted down, and I would have had to have started this whole project over again, so, mm, no, thank you. But yeah, I now have uh, a new project to start work on, and that is the supercritical phase shifting machine, which will take a good chunk of this energy too, so that's going to be fun. I'm going to get stuck into that, getting prepped and setting up a room and whatnot for it, and I will see you all shortly. I'm back, and uh, as you can see, I have made a bit of progress when it comes to my new supercritical phase shifter. It, it, it's, it's, it's pretty big. Uh, as you can see. In fact, it's got space for, I believe, 42 of the uh, super... what's it called? Super, super... that one. Supercharge coil, yeah. 42. <laughs> it's, uh... yeah. That, that's 42 times 3, and I'm bad at math, so whatever that equates out to be. And of course, this top one is 37 on top of the... 37 for the bottom here, and the 28, I think it was, for these side panels. Suffice to say, it has cost me an absolute metric fuckton of both plutonium and polonium pallets. As you can see, there's only 8 there at the moment, because, you know, it's uh, taken a while. But I, I can give you all an idea of just how fucking expensive this shit is. Uh, as I said, I've got to make uh, 37 and 42, so that's what, uh, 79, so I've got to make 79 if my calculations are correct, oh wait, no, I've got to make 37 of these, and at the moment I'm missing 110 polonium, which I'm going to have to wait who knows how long to get, but then I need 28 of, uh, no, 20. 42 of these <laughs> and for that I am missing 634 that is an absolute metric fuck ton of resources and it is uh, I'm I'm gonna have to leave this running overnight like without a doubt I, I have since reconnected the uh, quantum entanglo porter to the system so the, uh, well, yeah, to the power grid so that I can supply power because I kept, unfortunately, running out when the two were combined. So I've now, I'm now just dumping literally all the energy this produces into the resistive heater. It would be very hot in here if this was a real world situation, but yeah. As you can see, there's only 10 there and... As you can see, it's taking a while. That's what, 10 every one, two, uh, 10 every two seconds, so. Yeah. Uh, I need a thousand, and yeah, they, they, it's, it's gonna take a while. So, thankfully, uh, this episode will be coming out in about two weeks, because I've already got one finished, but it gets uploaded in a week. I do apologise for the delays, I've been quite the lazy bastard. But yeah, uh, thankfully that gives me plenty of time to leave this world just running in the background so I can generate the copious amounts of freaking resources I need. So I'm going to get that done, and when it's done, we'll be back to enjoy the uh, beautiful uh, beauty that is the supercritical phase shifter. Alrighty, I am back, and we have it. It, it is finally finished oh my apologies <laughs> it took a long time like a really really long time but i've got it done um as you can see it's <laughs> been running for about a minute now and we have two 
two measly millibucket of antimatter. So this is going to take a while. Uh, of course it is, because, you know, I think it's a thousand to one the ratio, which, you know, kind of sucks. But I mean, eh, it'll be fine. Uh, oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll dig in from the other side as well. Uh, the only other thing I have to do, as you can see me doing now, is uh, get the chemical crystallizer operational and set up. Ooh, uh, I should probably dig down by one more. There we go. Huh. Okay. Oh, universal cable. I, I, uh, this took forever to finish, I tell you now. I, I left this game running overnight because it just, yeah. Thankfully, when I woke up this morning, there was enough of everything. Uh, the system had actually backed up, which was not bad, but yeah. Ooh. Oh, are you kidding me? One short. <laughs> Oops. Wrong one. As you can see, I've been using the digital miner. Uh, I've had to gather a lot of resources. Uh, evidently, I'm going to have to run it again, because once the uranium I've got now runs out, that's it. I'm just out of uranium, which is a pain in the ass. Uh, what are we doing? 64. You know, I don't actually know what I've got to do next. I mean, other than, you know, make the... Oh, shit. Oh, no! Whoa, wait, 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 Oh, shit, what's going on here? Oh no. Wait a minute. I may have to go shut the way it's back online. What happened there? Ah. Okay, whatever. Uh for a minute there I thought the uh system was failing. But evidently not. It's a bit weird, don't you think? Huh. In any case, uh, I'm going to finish connecting all of this up. Now we've got the uh, supercritical phase shifter up and running. And yeah, once I've got enough antimatter to finalise my irons, uh, Iron Man suit, I will be uh, yeah back to show it off. And we're going to take the elytra for a ride and see how it goes. I'll catch you then. Alrighty, so we are here at the end of the episode, and finally, after a lot of trial and error, I finally have boop, boop, the wings. Wee! I mean, look at that. Don't they just look awesome? Digital wings that just stick out the back. Oh man, they're so pretty. And when I use the jetpack, it, it accelerates me like I was using a rocket. Which is just beautiful. Like, oh, it's so great. I, I, I can just accelerate and, you know, since I've got the electrolytic separator module, flying through the water just regenerates my lovely uh, hydrogen supplies. And, you know, since it's electrolytic and it's separating out the oxygen as well, I can, <laughs> yeah, use pretty much anything I need. It's, it's great. I am loving it so much right now. But, uh, yeah, that is, uh, unfortunately going to be the end of this episode because, uh, that, that's what I tried to get done. I love it so much. And, yeah, the antimatter system's working well. Oh, you know what? I wonder what happens if I just, like, yeet myself into the ground at Mark V. Death ahoy! Wow, I can't even kill myself if I wanted to. That's actually kind of cool. But as always, it is... Oh, hang on. As always, it is a pleasure to see you all. I uh, hope to see you in the next episode. Have a good one. And goodbye.